Hi, it's Jay. Um, so, not to kill the joke here, but, um, we recorded this episode in mid-January 2022 because, you know, Chris has a baby on the way and we were going to be pretty busy with the upcoming, um, or maybe it's out now, um, live commentary rotation for the 10th rotation. Um, so, so we had a lot going on and we decided to record this way ahead of time. And obviously, uh, the world has changed substantially since then. So we wanted to say that, um, since the content matter is pretty close to things that are happening in real life right now, we wanted to say we stand with Ukraine. Um, and in the, uh, description of the YouTube video, you'll find a, a bunch of, uh, Ukrainian charities to help the Ukraine people um there so that you can use this april fool's episode to support their struggle so with that in mind um on with the episode so you know the curse continues you know how we complain every single week about how you know we always see the movie that we're recording about on tv the day of um <laughs> air force one was on bbc america and about an hour ago, and I'm mad. Hello and welcome to Air Force One Every Week Forever, the podcast in which we watch Air Force One every week forever. This week, once again, for so many weeks in a row, Air Force One. It's really, I feel like we should circle back to the conversation we had about doing this. Like, we we should have really chosen like a, a series or something. Yeah, the a series would have been easier. We really didn't think this one through. Yeah. We didn't, no. We we really did not think it through. You know, we're quite a number. We're over, I'd say we're probably 70 weeks into this somewhere around. Maybe more. It, oh, God. Time doesn't exist. Holy shit. It's probably way more than that now that I think about it. Don't quote me. Hey, Ben, how was Air Force One this week? How was your watch? So, uh... My roommate decided to watch Air Force One with me this week. Mm. So we both sat down on the couch, and I suffered through it, and and they talked through it. Because <laughs> they were very not engaged with the movie. <laughs> so you were on your own this time, even though you had company. Yeah, it was not, it was not fun. Past past couple watches have been a little rough. I think we're far enough into the show where you're allowed to have just terrible fucking watches. Chris, how was Air Force One? How was your watch? You know, I had a fantastic watch. Air Force One, you know, you'd think watching it every week I would remember, but I mean, I sat down to watch it with my wife this week, and God, it felt like it was the first time I'd watched it in like a decade or something. I don't know. It was... uh. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was really good. I, uh, I feel similar. I think I'm coming back around on Air Force One. I hated it for a while. I loved it at the beginning. I hated it. I loved it and I hated it. I'm coming back around. I love this fucking movie. 
I mean, is it a cinematic masterpiece? No. But is it a solid, good movie? Yeah, it's a solid, good movie. I'm back around, baby. Air Force One, good fucking movie. God. <laughs> I've come back around, baby. Jay is at a at a peak, and I'm at a valley right now, so it's going to be interesting how this goes. Tell us about your valley. This fucking movie. So, like, if... if I were to, I was going through a checklist, a mental checklist of action movie cliches, and it hit so fucking many of them. That's what makes it great. I, cliches don't make a movie great, though. Listen, sometimes they do if they're <laughs> done well, and they're they done did, well in this. They did the, the the quote unquote taking a bullet for someone thing twice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but it's the president of the United States. That's their but, job. Like, listen, like, I, I know I bring this up all the time, but, like, when are we going to learn that bullets can go through people? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I also had an equally dumb firearms gripe this watch, where I said to my wife at one point when the dudes put the silencer on, the, and he, like, oh my God, the guy yeah. in the beginning of the silencer. I was like, oh, yeah. once again, another movie. Not understanding how <laughs> yeah. a silencer works yeah, it, in yep, real life. You know, silencer makes your gun go from bang to... Silencer, oh, yeah. a silencer, all it really does, for those of you who aren't aware, it basically makes it so you can fire a gun without having to put earplugs in and risk blowing yeah. your eardrum out. It's like it's like when movies do the pillow thing, which is even more ridiculous, where it's like, I will fire at you through this pillow with a gun, which yeah. is e even more ridiculous. Yeah. I keep forgetting, every week I forget this, and I'm more delighted by it every week, even when I have bad watches, I'm delighted by it, that Harrison Ford took a German suplex in this movie, which, yeah. <laughs> and he took it badly, he took yes. it really, really badly. <laughs> Although, I had, I had built this up in my head, every week I come back, and I'm like, he's supposed to have the little earring, right? And I keep forgetting that he doesn't have the little earring in this movie, and it upsets me. It's just thought, an offhanded thing. I said at one point about Harrison Ford being president with a little earring. And... I forget. I constantly forget. <laughs> Deeply disappointed. Shows up on screen, and I'm like, where's the earring? And I'm like, that's right, it's nothing. I've done this to me. You <laughs> know. God. <laughs> this movie would be better if Harrison Ford, President Harrison Ford, had so his little much earring. So, much, so better. much better. So much better. They should have, when he got into the little uh, air pod, the little fucking escape pod thing. When he gets and, into the air pod? That escape pod is fucking <laughs> hilarious. I yes, it is. So <laughs> fucking hard. So when I'm... he gets into the escape pod and they think he's in there, what should have happened is when it crash landed and the troops found him. What should have happened instead of what happened is there's on the seat should have just been his little earring, like yeah. dropping the straps and wrestling, just like I took off the little earring. Shit's gonna uh, go down. There's a there's a moment in this movie that made me laugh really hard for a number of reasons, and a lot of them were just like me stuff. Um, so William H Macy is in this movie, and he's fantastic in this movie. Um, he is. He plays the father, Frank, on the show Shameless. Uh, very good show. One of my wife and I's favorites. Um, so I just kept in this movie. I'm like, Frank, what are you doing? But Frank, which, come on, what are you... And there's the point towards the end where they're flying the plane and President Ford is sitting, you know, he sits down, he puts the headset on, William H. Mace, he sits down next to him to help him fly. And I was like, well, he's no Chewbacca, but Frank will do. And my wife goes, what? And I was like, huh? <laughs> and it was just what? I was sitting there with my roommate, and I'm like, yeah. And they they start flying together for years, and uh, the, the co-pilot guy uh, starts to develop a rare hair condition and grows two feet. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, Star Wars? Have you never seen Star Wars? Um, I want to, I, I want to, real quick before we move on, circle back to the escape pod, because that is my new can't... favorite part yeah, the escape pod of is this very good. When they all close in and they open the door and it's just empty, I fucking just lost empty. it. I was just like, oh, <laughs> well, they built it up for like... there, like... 
<laughs> they built it up for like ten minutes, and the whole time you're like, "Of course he's not in the well, again, escape pod. Of course he's not in the escape pod. Of course he's not in the escape and see, pod." As someone who, again, for some reason, maybe it's just because I got really high for this watch, I. It's like I hadn't seen it in a decade, and for, like, that ten minutes, I was sitting on the couch, and I'm watching this movie, and I'm like, does he get off the escape pod? I thought he was on the plane the whole time. Is the, Does the back half of this movie get much different? What's... It's not to say that the back half of this movie didn't get very different than I remember, because it did. Yeah. <laughs> but... yeah. This this movie suffers by what I will call the Last Jedi effect, where it has too many endings. It does. Ha it has two very definitive endings, and the first definitive ending is way more definitive than the second ending. Yeah, the first ending was way better. They defeat the bad guy or whatever, and you're like, oh, the credits roll, right? No, there's like another half hour to the movie left. The movie yeah. still goes on. Yeah, this is a two hour movie that could have easily been an hour and a half and still been just as good, if not better. I like how there was the forethought of, like, they have a man on the inside on the plane. Like, this this story could have easily been, yeah, random, uh, like, Eastern Europeans just hijack the plane and have guns. Like, no, they actually thought, like, okay, we yeah. need a Secret Service member who's a turncoat. I mean, it's, uh... It's a decent plan. Like, I started to write a note, like, if... I started to write a note like, oh, so let me get this plan straight. And the more I wrote it, the more like, granted, pre-9-11. But this is a pretty good plan that they put together. Well, it's, uh, I mean, it's interesting watching this movie in 2022. Yeah. Because, like, it's like, this is 1997. Even back in 1997, you didn't see a lot of, like, the Soviet Union are the bad guys thing anymore. Yeah. Like, by 97, <laughs> it was, like, that had kind of gone from most pop culture. So it's really funny for the central plot to be, like, uh, Russian ultranationalists trying <laughs> to reform the Soviet Union. <laughs> I don't know why it took me two years to do on this podcast, but... You know, there's. it is interesting to watch this movie in 2022 um, for a number of reasons, which we'll get into all episode. Oh, yeah. Because we're at a high point, baby. We're at a fucking yeah. high point. We Such got so much point. to say I'm about. I'm so happy about this. Uh, <sighs> I'm sure if you go back to earlier episodes, we're just repeating ourselves. But yeah. Well, what else are we going to talk about? Um, it is 1997. But none of these fuckers, they went through this extremely intricate plan None of these motherfuckers could buy walkie-talkies. None of them. Not one of them could buy a fucking walkie-talkie. Yeah. The whole well, time they're just shouting yeah. Russian across the plane at each other. We need to bring that up, too, because that made the watch so much funnier for me for a very specific reason. So, for reasons we won't get into, Jay's version that she watched didn't have subtitles for the Russian dialogue. I used to know some Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough Russian to get through this movie. That's what you guys were going on about. I was wondering and why Jay was like, there's no subtitles this time. I was like, what do you mean there's no subtitles this time? There's so much Russian spoken in this movie and so yeah. many subtitles. If this was ten years ago, I might have been able to squeak by. but And I knew, like, some basic stuff. Anyway, the point being, I think it's this is a really weird Commissioner Gordon origin. But it's even weirder that, like, we figured out the point at which this happens. So, like, Batman happens after Spider-Man because Sp Sp Tobey Maguire Spider-Man spent so many years not paying rent yeah. that his landlord <laughs> had to go and choose to hijack Air Force One in order to break even. <laughs> I said that. So, really, this I, whole movie's yeah. fault is, is Spider-Man's. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! I said that to my wife at one point. I was like, the fact that I'm watching Gary Oldman <laughs> and the landlord from Spider-Man 2 <laughs> I jack a plane right now. I was like, what the fuck was this movie? I, I want to re-edit the entire movie where every time he has a line, it's just him saying, give me a rent. Rent. I want to understand what it is that you want. What do I want? Give me a rent. <laughs> 
It's funny you bring up Commissioner Gordon and it was bound to happen because I I made I had I had to make a note of it. Um vaguely unrelated, but I guess this could be added to the list. It might have been added to the list. My wife's keeping a list of things I say when I'm high. Fantastic. I discovered fantastic. Um I I turned to her at one point and I was like, uh, I was like hey, Gary Oldman just incredible actor, played so many incredible characters. You know, he was great as Commissioner Gordon. Um, and I was like, that's all I see now in this movie is he's Russian Commissioner Gordon, Comrade Gordon, if you will. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> we had to have had the title Comrade Gordon by now, right? Like, that, that has to be one we had by now. It's right? so long to get to this point. I, uh, God. The, when they first like initiate the plan and they grab all the guns and they're just mowing motherfuckers down the hallway. I I looked at my wife and I went, ah, no Russian. No Russian. And she went, what? And I went, oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> you nerd. You fucking nerd. You absolute fucking nerd. I don't know if I'm more upset you made the reference or if I'm more upset that I got it immediately. I I wouldn't really have gotten it, it if I gave me. I'm not even a big like Call of Duty guy. Me neither. I gave my dad a stack of shooters because you know he famously just plays Fallout over and over again. <laughs> again, and I have shooters that I haven't touched in years. So I brought him down. I'm like, here, play these fucking games. And he played Modern Warfare 2 recently, and that's why I oh, remember no. not you no know, Russian. My most memorable memorable interaction with Jay's father is I was going to pick Jay up the one day. And they're talking about Fallout New Vegas. And Jay's like, well, you should do, like, some of the some of the Caesars Legion stuff sometime. And I'm like, he's been playing this game for how long? <laughs> and he has it. Jay's like, you should do the one where you shoot the president. He's like, why would I do that? It's, Jay's like, I don't know. To, you know, mix it up. <laughs> no, he plays in a very specific way every single time. <laughs> he only learned after... Four or five years of playing this game, he only learned that you can end the game without firing a shot recently. Oh Which, by God. the way, I've never played New Vegas front to back, but I know this information. <laughs> That's how I did the, uh, like, the ultra hard achievement. I did it in, like, an hour and a half, and I just ran, and I flirted, and I slept my way to the top, baby. <laughs> Failing upward. Yeah, Yo, just... Gary Oldman is so fucking good in this movie. He's so fucking good. It's Gary Oldman knocks great. that apart in everything. But it's this movie, ugh. Transcendent performance. Like, everything, everything, like, th this movie is, like, solid good. Gary Oldman, every scene, a thousand times better than everything else in this movie still. Like, yeah. he carries the movie hard fucking carry. The menace that he gives off while yeah. somehow being, like, he manages to get near, like, feeling for him. But, it, yeah. you every like, you'd feel yeah. for him a little bit, and then the next scene you're like, oh, this motherfucker. It's like that throughout well, the entirety of the movie. It, I mean, it does a great job of, of what, like, the MCU movies have tried in pretty much every single one of their movies, where it's like, oh, see, he's the bad guy, but you know why he's doing it, right? Like, you get it. <laughs> It's like you understand him, right? Even if you don't like him, it like you it does that. You understand Ultron, the genocidal robot, yeah. right? Thanos was right, written on a toilet, and Clint Barton looks down like, hmm. I, mean, I was more thinking Killmonger and Black Panther, but yes, I mean Ultron, sure. I, I think I think you managed to name the one that I couldn't probably make that argument. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I was trying to be ironic. I. uh... Which, no, by the like, way, mo almost all of those movies fail at that subplot. Yeah. I think yeah. I think Civil War manages to pull it off, but every other one is just like... I think Black, Black Panther, Panther did it too close. well. Oh, Black Panther, Black does, Panther do does it way too well. Too well. You're because right. then you're like, oh no, Killamonger got fucked here. Yes. <laughs> um, no, I mean, this movie does that very well, though, where you're yeah. like, no, no, he's a monster, but I get why he's doing what he's doing. <laughs> like, I understand his motivations very well. <laughs> the the line, I, I'm willing to, I, 
do you want to know why I something along the lines of you want to know why I do this because I believe and because I believe I'm willing to put away my own personal morality it's just the whole fucking I think I think him talking to uh uh Harrison Ford's daughter might be the most unnerving yet interesting scene oh in the God. entire movie and that's this is perfect so I, I was just thinking like how fucking traumatized is this poor child? Like, holy shit. Oh. Listen. Traumatized, yes. Does she probably feel more secure than any child does <laughs> if the fact that their parent can protect them? 100%. This I, girl I'm... never worried about anything ever again. She's like, no, my dad will fucking figure it out. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> she's got my dad is both president and also Liam Neeson from Taken to to deal with for the rest of her life. Oh like my she's... god, this movie was taken before Taken was taken. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you never try to sneak out of the house after that. To be clear, yeah. you're, just, you're like, I mean, she never has a, a boyfriend until was... Harrison Ford passes because every single one of them are too intimidated by Harrison Ford. She's like, you don't understand, he'll fight you on a plane. (laughs) You really don't want to meet my dad. No, I'm sure he's a freak. No, you do not want to meet my father. One of my favorite lines in this entire movie is at the beginning where she's like, why didn't you take me to the refugee camp? (laughs) He's like, you're too young to see that kind of thing. You don't have to see that. And she's like, I'm 12 years old, Dad. I'm ready to go to the refugee camp. (laughs) Half an hour later, sees a guy get a bullet to the head. I said that's Danny when she said that, the whole interaction. I looked over, I was like, oh, yes, 12 is, is old enough to go to the refugee camp. Of course, yes, yes. Somebody brought up, um, I think Ben brought up, or no, Chris brought up the watch this movie in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. It's so wonderful. And I think we've brought this up (laughs) on the podcast before to watch Harrison Ford struggle with technology that is now outdated. (laughs) So he goes. He goes to get the satellite phone, and you cut from that scene to another high-stakes scene, and you cut back, and he's just, like, looking through a manual for the the satellite phone, and he finally figures it out, and he's like, ah, shit, what's the number? (laughs) I imagine that 2022 Harrison Ford has to go through the same <laughs> process every time he picks up a cell phone. It makes me so happy. I just want to call my damn daughter. I love that the plot of this movie hinges on Harrison Ford, the president. If In case we haven't made that abundantly clear that Harrison Ford plays the president of the whole ass United as, States. As you should know by 70 plus ep- yeah. episodes by now. Um, the fact that he doesn't know the number to the White House. So he connects to the <laughs> operator. And oh God, that that's fucking so operator fucking is my. Fa- I will say it till the end of time. That fucking operator is my favorite character. She's like, yeah, you're the, sure president. the president. Sure. And, and then he's the call. Yeah, he's the, the call. Which whoever wrote this movie needs to understand two things about tracing a phone call. <laughs> you need to have a fixed location. And I don't think that fucking Air Force One is has a traceable phone line. I just imagine her <laughs> Not from a satellite phone ID. he found in yeah. someone's luggage. I just imagine her looking at the color ID and it just says Air Force color One. Color ID like, did oh. not exist. I know. That's a fucking switchboard, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Mother. So Harrison Ford. <laughs> Harrison Ford goes, is put in a position where. He has to drop some fuel in order to take control of the situation. (laughs) I was waiting to get into this. (laughs) So, Harrison Ford is presented with a situation where he has to cut cut two wires, and he Mm -hmm. loses the connection because the satellite phone dies in the middle of it. So Harrison Ford is presented with a situation where if he cuts the wrong wire... He is going to die, as is his family and everyone else on Air Force One, hijackers or innocents included, if he doesn't cut the right wire. So Harrison Ford's big idea is to look at the wires. It's like green, yellow, red, white, and blue. He already cut the green wire. He's like, red, white, and blue, I'm counting on you, buddy. So his idea (laughs) is to cut the wire that's not red, white, and blue. (laughs) 
because he has full faith in America that there are <laughs> the Air Force One. <laughs> The fucking ones that you don't cut are the red, white, and blue and fucking fires. It's nuts. Which means there are three out of four timelines where the yellow wire was the wrong wire. <laughs> I have so I have a lot to say about this scene because it was pretty funny <laughs> that shit. I, uh, it's my I favorite mean, we were, part of every week. We were, it's just we were talking about Let's talk about earlier. this scene. It's yeah. like it's like we sit down and have a banquet, a dinner every week about yeah. this specific scene. There, uh, yeah, I mean, we were talking about cliches earlier. The whole cutting the wire to like defuse a bomb yeah. or do something in fucking old action movies and shit is hilarious. And also, I don't know if it's been brought up on the podcast before. I'm colorblind, so it's extra oh hilarious God. to me I every about time. That. Because they pop the panels open, it's like, all right, cut the green wire, and I would just be staring at the wires. <laughs> well, I'm fucked. Right. I'm like, fuck, that, well, that one looks kind of like that one, so that means it could probably be green or brown. I don't know if there's a brown wire, that seems, it'd be a process of elimination. They're like, you have to hurry up, and I'm like, hold on, I'm problem solving. <laughs> There have been at least two times in our D&D games where we've been presented with this exact same puzzle, and then whoever's running the game has to remember that we have two colorblind individuals on in the game. Yep. But no, I mean, that's fucking hilarious. Two, so I want to I really break down for the audience the process that happens here. Yes, the dumb <laughs> is being guided through how to do that by someone. The phone dies, but the it really comes down to he's got to cut two wires and then cross the wires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's apparently how you – that triggers some sort of automatic dumping of fuel from the plane. <laughs> that's just a process that's built into the plane. Well, no, but it's only not. If you go like the, through... whole, the whole thing is like – Harrison Ford's like, I have to dump some fuel. And they're like, okay, well, Mr. President, it's not like we designed the plane yeah. to just offload fuel in <laughs> case a Russian nationalist hijacks you. Although I bet <laughs> you they did after this movie came out. We've thought about. <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to cry open this panel and <laughs> cut a bunch of fucking wires <laughs> and cross them and through electricity magic. It'll dump fuel. <laughs> because in 1997, that's how people thought electronics were. That if you cross some wires, it'll open the secret wire hatch on the fuel tank, and it will just dump the fuel. So let's go from that batshit scene to the next batshit scene, which is, okay, so Harrison Ford realizes that if he brings the shit, the plane down to a specific like height he can get everyone to parachute off, out of the plane All right, mm -hmm. they have to drop to to 50, uh yeah 15,000 so, feet yeah. instead of 30,000 so they have to go half like they're so out. so they can land safely in Kazakhstan which that's a plot point that yeah. they kind of no, just this is like before there's... Kazakhstan these no, oh, is this, it is before... them, this is so they can get to Kazakhstan because oh, President Ford dumped the fuel, you see. So they're uh, running out so of fuel. So that way they had to call the, the they yeah. called the That's US government. That's what the plan was. And the US government tries to bargain with the terrorists. <laughs> they're like, hey, listen, we'll give you fuel in exchange Which... for some hostages. And <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> Russian <laughs> guy who is so smart is like, or we could all just die. And Miss Vice President is like, you know, you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> that's uh, that's Vice President Glenn Close, by the way. <laughs> so okay, so and and should be remembered that the beginning of this movie is Harrison Ford making a very clear comment, just like American interventionalism, baby. That's what we're going with. We don't negotiate with terrorists, and we'll invade if we find something's even slightly wrong. That's how we're. That's my new policy, and everybody's like, "This is a shit policy." And he's like, "Ah, but I made it. Now leave no, me alone. I have well, to go watch the football this, game." That's the important thing to note here, because that's how 1997 was. His people, like his cabinet, are like, "This is a horrible plan." But his fucking approval ratings are through the roof. People are thrilled. They're like, "Get him! That's right, President Ford." Get him. Harrison Ford's wife is like, "You better be careful. You're gonna get yourself reelected." And Harrison Ford's like, "That's what I said." Yeah, I knew it. You know, I'm, people are like, "Yeah, you get them." 
So to yeah, rather you get on your seventh that. term. Yeah, it's like twelve guys in the Midwest who just learned about Kazakhstan <laughs> today. Are like, absolutely, get them. <laughs> Alright, so, Jay has a point. We sorry. Need to, get to dial us back to right out the dropping the plane to fifteen hundred so they can parachute out. Yeah. And to bring us back into watching this movie in twenty twenty two. So I I don't know if she I think she's like an office clerk on Air Force One. But this lady is like, Hey, I know a way where we can tell them to bring the refueling plane in yeah. and bring them down oh to fifteen God. feet. 1500 feet we have a fax machine <laughs> this this part hit me so hard this week uh, throughout went... the entirety of this week ben kept reminding me how fucking old i am by him failing to understand basic concepts like opening crawls no, i didn't <laughs> fail to understand it it wasn't uh, that it long just, ben this week it especially yeah. hit me how long the fucking it's opening like credits minutes. are just... That's uh, that's how movies were back then, bud. Yeah. I mean, you pop your VHS tape in that you rented from the library, and you sat down and you waited like five minutes for the opening right. titles. Here's something, here's something I, that's in your lifetime. The Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies have six-minute yeah. fucking intros. Yeah, that's true. They are long intros. Oh, that, you see a bunch of American flags? <laughs> Listen, there were people were jazzed in the theater watching this, like, yeah, <laughs> fax machines. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, so yeah. he got he and the clerk. <laughs> no, go ahead, explain Ben, because you were mesmerized by I this was, because it's so pretty fucking fun. In the middle of the in the middle of my watch, because it it really hit me this week. So I go into our Discord in all caps, and I just go, so wait, their master plan here. Is to send an SOS via fax. It's actually it's just a good to... plan. Because <laughs> it's explained that they cut the phone wires, but right. the fax is on a separate encryption line, right. and it would be easy for them to overlook it. So again, no, to I credit know, this movie, like, very intelligent plot point. It's a and, hilarious and in 2022. In 97, it makes sense. In the 2020s, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, but that's it's, like saying it's really funny that nobody pulled out a cell phone. Like, yeah, obviously. There's so many things in this movie that are hilarious to watch in 2022. I had – we paused for like a half hour at one point because I brought up – I was like, can you just imagine? Even if you just go the last 20 years. Because this movie is fucking wild, everything that happens. Yeah. And I, I kept thinking about the real-world implications of what the fuck would happen if this happened in real life. I was like, can you imagine, even if you go back 20, 30 years, any president we've had in real life in the last 20 to 30 years, if this situation <laughs> happened to them, how, how differently this would go? You got to go back like 40, 50 years for I any want, of them to even conceivably be able to handle this situation. I wanted to see Bush so bad. Well, we know he's got those cat-like reflexes. In the very middle good of this. Gosh. They just start throwing shoes at him. Like, yeah. My God. Petition to remake Air Force One with uh, the guy that played Bush on Mad TV and they just <laughs> replace all the guns with shoes being thrown. <laughs> like cats. Yeah. It's another very uh, old reference. Y'all remember Mad TV? Oh, God. Ah. <laughs> uh. I, I also learned Harrison Ford has a specific reaction when he's angry beyond belief. Uh, and I learned this between one specific scene and also him being scared of magic. And when it's it's <laughs> him when he cocks his head to the side and ha gives like a half tilt smile. When he gives that smile, it's time to run. Some because shit he's is about pissed. to go down. Because that he does that. He does that uh, a smile when somebody tells him the the result of the college football game that he's been telling everybody on the plane to not tell him the results to. God, this is a really good movie. <laughs> Such a good fucking movie. Such a good movie. <sighs> okay, I need to I need to 
I need to get this out. Okay. So we're at we're at the the the, the home stretch, right? Right. They got they got the home the, stretch. Not as good a movie. <sighs> no. I'm unfamiliar. But they got they got the other plane and they're like ziplining people. I wasn't over. making a movie reference. I was saying the rest of the home stretch of this movie is not no, a movie. Our, our dear sweet Ben, who's never oh. seen a movie, thought you were referring to a movie. <laughs> home stretch is what we just watched happen here. <laughs> Ben's never seen a movie except for Ben's Star Wars and Air Force movie. One. <laughs> Air Force One, seventy times. So we're we're wrapping up this film. And uh, so everyone's ziplining over the other plane, having a, a jolly good time. And meanwhile, uh, only surviving terrorists, uh, a fucking dude from the Hitman games, is is there with a gun. And he's he's so he shoots the other guy, and he's arguing with the president to give him the zipline. Like you're going to kill the president either way. <laughs> It's and you're it's, arguing with yeah. him while you're holding a gun. It's important <laughs> to note that yes, the final act of this movie <laughs> is them being rescued by zipline from another plane flying yes, slightly hit, above them. Right before they hit fucking water. Because they can no longer land the plane because the rudder gets fucked. Yeah. By the way, 1997 CGI as that fucking plane oh, comes God. apart, not good. Oh, it's so good. I uh, I said no at one point, like, as the plane was crashing, the horrible CGI was happening, I just looked at her and I was like, ah, so they've depicted what would actually happen in the Captain America origin. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy lets out this yell before it hits the water, and it's hilarious. It's yeah, fucking hysterical. You could tell they had a specific idea in mind. And the technology wasn't quite there yet, because yeah. they do this whole shot where the guy's, like, in the fucking yeah. doorway of the plane, and it zooms out on the CGI plane, and it's fucking gold. Oh, it is really, <laughs> I never get really tired good. of seeing that. Yeah, it's, uh, ooh, it's... Air Force One is a good movie. It's a good fucking movie. I mean, I'm it gets off this... It gets off this this feeling that they wrote a movie and then they were like, well, shit, we can't just leave it on them being in the air with fuel dropping. It's like, no, you could have, and it would have been the better movie. It would have been the better movie, but it's still a great movie. Air Force One is a great movie. Oh, my God. I'm try it's like I have so many thoughts and I'm trying to figure out which one to go with first at this point. Like this this is there's so much in this movie. There's so much there, here's like a minute comment on the movie that proves that we've watched this seventy times in a row. Air Force One. This is obviously not the real Air Force One. So obviously they had to paint it to what? look like the real Air Force <laughs> Air Force One. The paint is barely dried. When we see it on the platform in Russia, it's like it's barely dried and it's been exposed to extreme cold. So it's like it's like chipping and and bright and shiny. That would have been a better plot to the movie if they got on the plane and it was really just another plane that the Russians had painted <laughs> to look like Air Force One. <laughs> better movie. The, you know, the person's coming down the aisle with the cart, and it's just, like, a guy with, like, a blonde mustache on, and he's like, would you like any refreshments for the evening? <laughs> the American football game is on. The American football game is on, Mr. President. <laughs> the kind of football that you do with a, a triangular ball and not a circular ball, you know, Yes. Trying to, he's like, I'll just have a coffee, and the guy's just pouring vodka into a paper cup, and he's. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking movie. What a this fucking let's movie. Go, let's go. Let's go down. Let's go down my uh, my very short notes here. Beginning of the fucking movie, the parachute shot when the dude's parachuting in, and he fucking like shoots the guy <laughs> from the air while he's parachuting down. Bullshit. Terrible decision. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> idea. One of the worst goddamn things I've seen in a horrible uh, action movie. 
Um, oh, I've touched on it looks like everything else. Uh, I just have in bold lettering and a fucking uh, Oxford comma, just uh, present for based or war criminal, which is yeah, a thing I, I said to Jay at one point in the Discord. Uh, so he's a war criminal oh, a for sure. thousand million percent because there hasn't been a U.S. president that wasn't a war criminal. I was going to say, well... Um, but is he also based? Um, I would hesitate to describe any person in power got, as based, listen, but in terms I, I, I of said like, that. I put that in the Discord like 10 minutes into this watch. <laughs> and then as, as quickly as that thought came, we got like 20, 30 minutes of this movie. I was like, oh no, no. no. <laughs> Decidedly no. <laughs> I need a prequel to Air Force One that's just this guy's because it would end up playing like one. I need a sequel to Air Force One. Oh, Air Force Force now. Two. Yeah. Give me Air Force Two and Air Force Three. It, I need Air Force Zero. I would prefer Air Force Air Zero Force. because it will ruin Air Force One totally because it's just him committing war crimes in Vietnam. Yeah, that's how many years has he been serving? As, as well he they said he did is. they said he did um uh, hot air rescues in Vietnam. In oh, movie. yeah, yeah. As great as this movie is, the exposition dumps are inexcusable. They, it's got uh, those, yeah. <laughs> the wife yeah. will be like, well, honey, you remember your time in Vietnam when you fought, like, and she goes into like, a whole story. It's and like, why are we to... doing Listen, they trying... have to create yeah. an entire fake yeah. presidential... No, I know, but... It, it, it's understandable. <laughs> They're trying to, like, establish that he'll be fine or whatever, and the guy stands up at one point in the boardroom, you know, the situation room, as they're all trying to figure stuff out. And he's like, listen here, I served with him, and I knew – and it's just a big <laughs> exposition dump. It's fucking hilarious. It felt like It's like that, someone's um... reading off the backstory box on a fucking D&D &D character <laughs> sheet. It felt like that scene in Daredevil Season 2, which I won't spoil uh, uh, the way this ends up, but it's the court scene where they're like – all right, but this is all uh, this. I can't tell you about what happened because this is all uh, confidential information. They're like, okay, tell me what you remember. And then this general guy goes through the exact details of the mission, and, oh my God, and then, yeah. and yeah. then like, and then they're like, well, how do you know these things happen? It's like I wasn't clear. I was there. It's I like, was there. first was, of all, like, so much in, stupid ex exposition just to make the fucking Punisher seem like maybe he's not a bad guy. Spoilers, he's the fucking Punisher. But also, you couldn't have said that at the start? I th it would be a better movie if, like, they cut back and, like, <laughs> pretending like the vice president and the president know each other very well, which this it's, movie uh, does a lot. Kind of it would have been a better movie. But they don't, like, explicitly... It would have been a better movie if just, like, fucking Marshall, President Marshall just started, pull, which I will always prefer as President Harrison Ford. No, President, President Harrison, Harrison Ford. If he just started fucking pulling off spec off ship on the uh, plane and they were like, yeah. oh, yeah, he was in the military, wasn't he? He just, like, <laughs> he just, like, pulls a butter knife out and fucking, like, throwing knives into a dude's jugular. And it's just like, President Another... Ford's the best of the best. I might be <laughs> wrong because it's... We've seen this so many times, my brain's jumbled now. But, like, they don't even call him President Marshall until, like, halfway, almost three-quarters of the way yeah, everyone's, the uh, <laughs> he go. He meets back up with the hostages in, like, the boardroom at one point. And the fucking first guy that sees him is like, John! It's like, it's Mr. President Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President the Mr. President Ford. Harrison the Ford, thank it's you very little, much. Yeah, it's a little informal for the president. I don't know that, uh... You know, President Obama would walk into a room and the first staffer he sees would just greet him. Ah, Brock, how you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see people casually refer to Obama as it's, Barack. Oh, God. Uh, another th weird thing that happens in this movie is 25 minutes into the movie where the vice president is like, God damn it, somebody bring me the Constitution. <laughs> I need to read the Constitution now. <laughs> and this Constitution specialist comes in and it's like, well, you're both kind of right. And it's like, the Constitution ain't that fucking law. <laughs> you should I, know this information already. Yeah. This what this movie does have one of my favorite, I didn't want to call it a B plot. It's like a C plot, maybe a D plot. It's like an F plot. <laughs> where like, 
So all this shit's going down. And meanwhile, there's people just, like, in the fucking, the, like, White House conference room, whatever the fuck it is. And they're like, hey, you know, if, if we get enough people to sign this, the vice president can be the president. And it goes nowhere. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We revisit it, it, it once, so the vice president could be like, "No," and she just throws it away. Well, it's visited about three or four times, but every it, it's increasingly unspecified every single time. Yeah. The only p- reason it's there is to be like, "No, the vice president is very much on the president's side." When realistically, the vice president would be like, "I can be president right now." Yeah. Yes, and that's how that would have oh. gone. Even to just, say that they were president for five minutes. It's it's my favorite coup subplot of anything, because it's just so random. <laughs> One of my favorite, like, what the fuck is happening scenes is when, like, it breaks to the press. It breaks to the press that, Somehow. that um, Air Force One has been hijacked or maybe crashed. Uh, they say, and all, the, the press says it crashed. They say it crashed. <laughs> And then the first reaction of the vice president is to go on TV and say, all right, it's been hijacked, which is understandable. But she decides to specifically mention, yeah, he's still the president. Like, if you're going to do that, send out the press secretary with a chosen statement. Because all that they do is the thing that happens in the movie, which is they tip off the fucking Russian nationalists that they have the fucking president. And she's also like, I can't elaborate any further. But there are terrorists who hijacked Air Force One currently. Yeah. <laughs> and the president I can't give you any is... details except for most of the details. Except for the most crucial detail that the people on the plane don't even know, which the president is still the president, and he's for some reason not out on this stage right now. And and I love that up until this point, the the fucking the, the Russian nationalists think they're dealing with just one, like, badass Secret Service member. And the vice president's press release is what makes it click. Yeah. That, the oh, vice president this is, is the president of the United States killing us. <laughs> I mean, to be fair to Gary Oldman, comrade. Uh, comrade, Oldman. comrade Oldman. Comrade Oldman. Comrade Gold- Gordon. Um, he, uh... Who the fuck would think for even half a second? Oh no, it's the president. <laughs> it's the president that has gone on this one man Rambo esque mission to <laughs> take us all if, out. If the Constitution thing is like a C plot, then this is an F plot. But how about the face heel face turn of a uh, uh, the one uh, chief of staff member that's like, yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. give up this secret security motherfucker so that we don't end up dying all the time. And they're like, well, this is secret security guy realizes that he has like one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. And it's like, I don't want to die. And then later on, he takes a bullet for the president of the United States. <laughs> also, like, God, this is a good movie. It's a, so, good. it's a very good movie. Ben's shaking his head like it's not a good movie. He's in a down sure. moment. We're God, fucking high. Very down mood. We're fucking so high on Air Force fucking, One. I'll into it. Fucking Comrade Goldman is sitting there. Fucking Goldman? Oldman. Oldman. I tried to combine Gordon and Oldman, and I got Goldman. Goldman. Comrade Goldman. Comrade Goldman. Comrade Oldman is sitting there, you know, traumatizing a child. Mm. And in the middle of all this, he just fucking boops her nose. And, and kisses her on the it's... forehead. I mean, that was that's a Listen, I mean, that's a uncomfortable, just, like, like, half a second her. as he's leaning in. It's very uncomfortable. As he's leaning in, it's like, where are you going, man? And he kisses her forehead, and it's like, I guess that's the better, the best of the outcomes, but still super creepy. Totally fucking creepy. Super creepy. By the way, the entire sequence of them letting the... We haven't mentioned, there's a Russian general. Their entire plan is that they want a Russian general that's a hero of the people. Because, you know, we're like nine years removed from the fall of the Soviet Union. So there's still a lot of people that were key to the Soviet Union that are in prisons. So this guy that's been in jail for nine years, they believe is hero enough that they could turn the 
people against the current government and that they could mobilize an army to you know stage a new russian revolution the entire sequence where he's released from prison is so goddamn good it's the highlight of this movie by a country mile because it's just these cuts between this the celebration in the prison cells and like this somber feeling throughout the plane and then comrade oldman just like sit sitting like as if he's just accomplished his life goal it's so it's brilliant cinema it really is it's just that entire sequence all the way down to when he tries to take the first lady hostage like all the way that entire sequence which oh, is why yeah. this movie should have ended 20 yeah. minutes before it did yeah. it thing. hit its peak it hits its peak he does that he goes back they uh you know he's able to call off the general being released and a general's killed trying to escape and it's like day is saved you see the russians all hugging each other the russian president's just like hugging everybody like he just scored a touchdown or something i don't know that's super weird because really he didn't do anything um, well i i think i think the the movie goes out of its way because you know it's a lot of anti-russian well, i think they don't want the russian president to be seen as like a good guy in this yeah. situation they just want him to be like a lackey because they they very much do play on you know comrade oldman does say this yeah. But the whole movie supports it, where he's like, he has no spine. He's just there to support the United States. Yeah, like, and, the, the, the whole point of the hijack was to get the president on the phone to tell the Russian president, hey, let him go. And the Russian president's just going to be like, okay. And he just is. Like, <laughs> because he's not, he, he knows what happens if he doesn't. Yeah. So, like. He has no spine, and he realizes, best case scenario, he becomes a clerk in fucking Siberia, and worst case scenario, he gets hung in the street in this scenario. So, like, he's celebrating with everybody, like, yeah, we did it, when it's really just like, yeah, I'm not gonna fucking be executed. Yeah. And then, yeah, the movie goes on for another 20 minutes while it President does. Ford tr flies the plane, and they get attacked which, by fighter jets. Which is uh, not as fun as the other times when no. president harrison ford has to then, figure out how to work and technology this, this movie's great but it feels so long that like when by the end the secret service guy who helped the russians get on board like pulls the gun out and they remind you like hey he's a bad guy i had completely fucking forgotten about that part of the plot i was like oh my god that's right he helped them <laughs> i didn't forget because every like five minutes in this movie like for every five minutes that happened on air force one they show specifically a shot of that guy being like smiling at the president and then the president leaves the frame and he's just like ah fuck it's like uh it's like a social deduction game and anytime someone's not looking at you when you're clearly the, the person that's working against the rest of the group he's like ah fuck this is not going my way but the dude could have acted so much sooner yeah or he could have just well i i was gonna say he couldn't just i was gonna say he could have just like lied but the only reason why he acts at any point is because he was going to get left behind. Oh. And it's like, well, fuck, I have to shoot the president now. I don't have a choice if I'm going to live. And the president, like, makes sure everyone gets off the plane first, even though they very clearly should be getting the president off. And they're very clear yeah. to tell him, we need to get you off. And he's like, no, no, get the injured guy off, get my wife and kid off. And then it comes down to, like, the last two people, and it's William H. Macy. And it's russian asset secret service guy and uh you know william h macy's like yeah of course you you leave you know this is what you know we're supposed to do you get off safely you know we understand what we're doing and then that's when he shoots william h macy and he you know goes after uh uh president ford and he's like i and harrison ford's like i trusted you and the guy's like yeah, and the next president will too i'm getting off this plane this motherfucker thinks his plan <laughs> was he was going to get the harness, get to the plane, be like, well, the president told me to go instead of himself, you know, saved me instead of saving himself. He thought he was going to keep his job as a Secret Service guy, like for letting this all come on. For letting the president sacrifice himself. Yeah, like 
Everybody was losing their jobs. That's the thing that the movie doesn't talk about, is that everyone that worked on Air Force One was losing their jobs. Like, all right, you got out alive. Except for the lady who sent the fax, because he offered her... (laughs) uh, Yeah, he really is a bad person. Uh, Like the head of the Postal Service, and I forgot what that's called. Uh, Postmaster General. Postmaster General. He's like, Postmaster General's yours if this works. She is. Well, let's be very, very clear. This man is a Republican president through and through. Like, he's a monster. But based, I wouldn't say so, but you can root for him kind of for a while in the movie. Because, you know, unlike every other Republican, he's, you know, a real person and not, you know, an evil businessman. I also, so, we're, we're flying into Kazakhstan, and, like, so, they're like, hey, we're crossing the border right now, you better call off your jets, or else there's gonna be hell to pay, buddy, and the, the, the vice president's like, uh, okay, and they do, and then, like, that whole, like, chunk of movie happens, and then five minutes later, they're like, they're sending fighters out. We're in the middle of Kazakhstan. And I'm like, how fucking fast does this plane go? Because we, like, just got here, and now we're in the middle well, of the country. No, at that point, yeah. they were away from Kazakhstan, going, like, closer to Russia, and it was Russian fighters that are scrambled. And they're very, it's very important they remind you that these are Russian these fighter are Russians. jets. Okay. But they are loyal to the... Kazakhstan, the to Kazakhstan the Kazakhstan general. general who was just murdered. But much like... Well, no, the much general like the that they want to bust out of prison uh, is a Russian Soviet no, general. He's Kaz- he's, no, he is a Kazakhstan general. I don't believe he is. He's a he Russian Soviet general. He's been in jail for nine years. Right, but this is after the fall. Kazakhstan was a Soviet nation. Well, yes. That's yes. the thing. He Which, is by the Kazakhstan. way, he is from Kazakhstan, and is trying to once again unite Russia and take Russia over and reform the Soviet Union. Yes. That is the plan. Least victorious dictator of Kazakhstan, uh, General X-Wing. Ivan Redick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey Ben and Chris, where in the world is Kazakhstan? Don't open a wiki page. Just it's just it's, south of Russia. I already saw it. It borders. Oh, God, uh, it you. borders. Doesn't it border Russia and China technically? Like it's yeah, uh, it's, on so. the, it's settled. It's settled between yeah. Russia, China, and Mongolia. I know where Kazakhstan. Ben already saw where in the world it was, so all of the humor of, of that course, segment. I already died have the. I already have the wiki up. I mean, this is I my job. The Wikipedia page for Kazakhstan is Ben's homepage. We've established this <laughs> many rotations. <laughs> yeah, I Speaking open of, uh, Firefox and I'm on the Air Force One film wiki. Oh yeah, no, this this plot is hilarious. This part of the plot specifically, yeah. where they are flying away from Kazakhstan, and the Russian fighters are scrambled, and they're very clear to point out they are loyal to the now deceased general of Kazakhstan. It's like, what are what are you guys doing? You guys much, are so much off like, the plot right now. Much <laughs> like soldiers from another fallen empire, they're just still fighting for some reason, <laughs> even though their leader is now deceased. It's like, where do you think this is going, guys? What? Well, much like Japanese military operatives that were left on some of the more far-stretched islands in the Pacific, they're still fighting a war that ended a long time ago. But the difference here is... The, the Japanese operatives had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk These about... These men are well aware that yeah, the fucking... entire goal that they were going for is, is... no longer yeah, attainable. Yeah, like, Boris and Vladislav <laughs> over here are just like, no, fuck it, get in the jets. We'll go, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we get them. Talk... Can we talk about, um... The fact that one of, uh, a U.S. military plane puts itself in front of Air Force One to take a missile, flats, <laughs> like, in front, on its side, in front of the flight path of Air Force One. That's a wild that's, movie. That's, that's the goddamn insane. Diving for the bullet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, this is just that scenario on fucking roids. The fucking, like, the director of this movie was like... Just halfway through a joint, just like, <laughs> you know what would be great? We'll have a jet. You know, we'll do the diving in front of the bullet thing, but with a jet and a <laughs> missile. 
And they're like, yeah, man, it's your movie. Go for it. I Sure. Mr. Ford's asking if you could put the earring back in. No, he did not put the earring, <laughs> the earring back in. We talked about this. It's in it a discussion, his contract. Harrison. I don't know. Did Harrison Ford have the earring by 97? I feel like we looked up the year he got this. I have this no idea. On point. I don't know. We've, we've, made, uh, we've made a lot of jokes about that earring that he may or may not have even had at that point. It's a better timeline, though, is that Harrison Ford just always had that earring. It really is. Like, he was born out of the womb with the little earring. And he just came out, and the doctor was like, we have no medical explanation for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, he got it in 1997. Oh, my God. Fuck, yes. Perfect, perfect timing. Perfect scenario. Perfect world. He had been lunching with buddies Jimmy Buffett and the late 60 Minutes correspondent Ed Bradley. We're all the same phones and watches, said, but I realized I didn't have an earring like they did. Oh my god. <laughs> so Harrison Ford got the earring because of FOMO. Basically, he was looking around and he went, hmm, I should have one of these. Do we have any closing thoughts on this particularly manic episode of Air <laughs> Force One? Um, no, I I just I want to point out how much I love the scene of uh, Comrade Oldman just chucking fucking <laughs> parachute packs out the back of a plane. Yeah. That scene is so fucking good. Everything Gary Oldman does in this movie is the best fucking thing. Anything Gary Oldman does in any movie is, like, the best thing ever. It's true. Uh, all right, bring us home, Ben. All right. Um. So, uh, for those uninitiated, uh, every every couple weeks I like to uh, to find a random article on uh, my homepage – the the Die Hard Scenario Wiki, of course, the home of Air Force, the Air Force One film wiki page, and so I have I have my list of all the articles, and I'm generating my my random letters to pick my random article. You know, Ben wrote an algorithm for this bit yeah, a while yeah. back. You know, you just... <laughs> we're we're a, we have we're a very involved podcast. Night and day. 007 Night and Day is a 2001 adventure game video arcade for the SNES. Alright, give me a link. Starring Tom Cruise? <laughs> well, I mean... What? Oh my god! And Cameron Diaz? Oh my god, I remember... I remember <laughs> this movie. Hold on. I also remember this, I remember movie, this but movie, but how not, is it on the SNES? I don't know. Is not it 2021 a, hold Adventure on. Game hold on. Video Arcade? Hold on. There's a lot of confusing things uh, happening. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things going on right now, including because... this is a 2021 game for the SNES. Hold on. Here's the... What... What the fuck is going on? So right here's now? a very important distinction to make. This movie... Not a 007 movie. <laughs> um, this movie came out a long time ago. And I have no idea what this adventure game they're talking about right now is. Because they're saying it's a adventure game video arcade for but the SNES. But it talks about the filming Starring and Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. The <laughs> game arcade directed by James Mangle is Tom Cruise. And <laughs> Who's Rami Diaz? Okay, this article was written by a bot or something. What weird... <laughs> what's happening here? Did I have a stroke? <laughs> Night and Day had been set for a June 25th, 2010 release date, but Fox moved its... Day. This... I, I, here's the problem with this entire article. It's talking about the movie, but it's... At the top, it talks about a SNES game. Did 007 someone? 007 Night and Day 1 was released in the United States on June 24th, 2021. The Game Arcade has received mixed reviews from Game Arcade critics. And, I, and was a I, success at the box office, crossing 260 I, million. My head. <laughs> what? 
What? The amount of site news... Like, the amount of citations on this article is goddamn nuts. It is. There's 60 citations. I feel like we found, like, an in-joke for, like, an obscure YouTuber or something. Yeah. I... <laughs> the Game Arcade also had an official remake in Hollywood. <laughs> With Her Herthic Rossman? But this Rossman? is also saying... 007 Night and Day 1 was released in the United States on June 24th, 2021. 2021? Which, uh... And then it had an official remake that was released on the 2nd of October in 2021. So, just months apart. I, I would like to point out that uh, currently on our favorite website, the Die Hard uh, Escape the Die Hard scenario wiki, the featured villain is Igor Kur yeah. uh, Korshinov, which is our wonderful villain from no this yeah. specific Fucking movie. way. What? Thank you, Igor Korshinov. The timelines, they're converging. <laughs> they're converging. I don't feel this so good. Has been... <laughs> I don't feel so good, Mr. The Ford. President Mr. Ford. President Harrison Ford, I don't feel so good. This has been Air Force One every week forever. Good night. Jesus Christ. Shit. That was beautiful. That was I gotta, holy we shit. We create art. We create art. <laughs> oh, fuck. I gotta watch Air Force One this week. <laughs> <laughs>